weekend. I'm talking to a man, and we'll continue this conversation in just a moment, who you'll love meeting. The 10th anniversary of Sheer Madness has brought in so many notables to help them celebrate, and our next guest is certainly one of them, Jose Ferrer. Jose Ferrer joins us this morning, and it is a delight to meet you, sir. How Thank are you? you? Thank you. Are you well? I'm fine. I don't think I have too much to do with that young man I saw on the screen just a minute ago. <laughs> uh, did you love doing that film? Yes. Uh, it's always wonderful to work with good actors, and uh, Fred McMurray is one of the best actors I've ever played with. Uh, I don't think he ever received the uh, credit for that picture that he should have. To me, his was the best performance in the film, was including it? mine. I thought he was uh, absolutely remarkable. He walked a tightrope between playing a villain and, and being a likable fellow, and it was quite remarkable. You and, uh, and actors like Fred McMurray have had the good fortune to make money in this business and stay alive, but there are other actors who don't, and that's primarily the reason why you're here. It's for the Actors Fund, isn't yes, it? Yes, of course. And it's not only actors who haven't made money, but it's also, uh, and not only actors, you know, the, the Actors Fund is 108 years old, but in that time, it now takes care of anyone connected with show business, opera, vaudeville, nightclubs, uh, movies, anything. Uh, uh, technicians, not just actors at all. It's widened its scope to take care of uh, anybody who works in, in show business and uh, look after them. Uh, we now have uh, a very extensive AIDS program, drug habilitation, uh, alcohol abuse, all kinds of things. Uh, it sounds like it's just uh, an outfit that looks after indigent actors, but it's much more uh, widespread than that. It has a beautiful home in Englewood, New Jersey, and attacked, attached to it is a, is a hospital where uh, you just walk through a door and you're in the hospital with first-rate medical care. And uh, this was uh, created by the Night of 100 Stars, the first one a number of years ago, then there was a second one. And now Saturday, May 5th of this year, there will be a third to help raise the funds that uh, the Actors Fund needs it's to It's very on. good to take care of your own. It, it really is, and it's very important. Tonight, all the money that goes from tonight's performance will go to the Actors Fund, but there's something called a buck a show, and yeah. that's a part of the Actors Fund, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's been going on for uh, uh, 10 years here now, thanks to uh, Marilyn Abrams and Bruce Jordan in Chicago and, and here. And uh, just from a few theaters in Chicago, including Sheer Man in Chicago and here, they have contributed $17,000 at the basis of a bucket show to, to, to the Actors Fund. That's terrific. It's and amazing. tonight you celebrate with so many other notables. But let's talk about your career. Uh, interesting background. You really had two hometowns. You were born in Puerto Rico and basically commuted back and forth from and there to And I went to school here. in New York. I graduated from high school in New York. Then I went to Princeton University mm. and then I went to Columbia University for graduate work. So uh, um, I've had a long, long... Uh, I'm, I'm a Hispanic American. I don't know how else to describe it. I feel profoundly American, even though Spanish was my first language. You were very fortunate to have the education you had. I Would you have was. gone so far in this business had you not had? I don't education? think so. I think my education has been the best friend I've had in my life. I always tell young people, the theater or acting or films, whatever it is you want to do, that's always there. But it, when you're young, if you can, uh, if your parents can afford an education, or if you can work to getting one for yourself. Uh, get it because it'll be a big friend when you're 40 or 45 and you come to uh, unhappiness, or confusion, uh, your career doesn't support you, you uh, something happens that uh, is unforeseen and things don't go as well as you might uh, have wanted them to. Uh, your education is your best friend because it gives you equilibrium, it gives you uh, ways to solve problems that seem insoluble. It is a source of endless delight to me because I spend my life uh, reading and studying and if uh, I were to stop acting today, I would go right back to college and get another education and I may yet do that. But you've had, uh, <clears throat> your education has never stopped in that you were probably one of or maybe the first to combine, to be a producer, a manager, a producer's manager. No, no, I was far from the first. Uh, before my time, there were a great many actor managers in America, including Edwin Booth and all kinds of other actors. Uh, but by the time the 50s came along, I think Morris Evans and I were the only ones, to the best of my knowledge. I'm not trying to claim credit for it, but I think we were. He, he produced uh, very extensively. He was a wonderful actor and a very good manager. And uh, I became a producer because uh, 
uh, if I saw a part that I wanted to play or read a, a, a play that I liked and nobody else would put me in it, I made it possible for myself. In it. But you couldn't do that today, you and I were talking. Um, I, the I, money I, I wouldn't know how to ask anybody for two or three million dollars. I wouldn't know how to raise that kind of money. I don't think any play is worth that. Is the, is the industry suffering because of the dollars now attached to staging? legitimate theater? They always claim that there's more money being made, but the question is how is the money being made and, uh, and to what end? Uh, if you make money in Les Miserables or Phantom of the Opera or Cats or Starlight Express or uh, one of those shows, that's well and good, but that's four shows. We don't have Broadway as Broadway anymore. You might have one or two comedies. You have Neil Simon every year, great, wonderful playwright, but you don't have uh, 10 or 15 or 20 hit shows anymore the way we used to have and uh, that's a shame there are fewer actors working the big goal now among young actors is to get on television you want to get a television series and then you're financially independent for life or get be very successful in films the theater has to be an avocation one newspaper in new york now tells people go or don't go and with tickets 35 40 50 60 dollars you can't experiment you can't. It's too no, expensive. You just can't. Yeah. Yeah, there are people that don't hold um, the kinds of values you do when it comes to a property. I mean, uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, you were asked to put on a long nose. You were telling me and, and make fun of it with Jimmy Durante, and you refused. Yet Steve Martin took the premise of that story to film and made a great deal of money with Roxanne. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's, I feel great for him. I think it's great that he made a lot of money. Um, I, I, with my subjective view of not of my performance, but of, of the character of Cyrano. Cyrano is a real person to me. Not my performance of Cyrano, but, but the character of Cyrano Bergerac is a real person. And in fact, he was a real person. He actually existed. And um, uh, I didn't think his personal dignity was, I thought it was violated in, in the film Roxanne, but that's my close-up opinion. And uh, I'm very happy for Steve that he had hits. He has a lot of hits. He's a, very successful, very clever young man. He was excellent in uh, waiting for Godot at Lincoln Center a couple of years ago. He's a very, very bright fellow. I just didn't like what they did to that my project. friend. To my friend. Can we talk just a little of your personal life? You and Stella reside in Miami now, and uh, I, she's not a member of show business. The fa in that she's, is that what makes this marriage work? Because before Rosie Clooney and Uta Hagen and some of them were in the business, was it a difficult thing to keep a marriage together with two people in the same business? I don't think so. Uh, all four of my marriages, uh, strange as it may seem to some people, uh, took place because uh, I very much wanted that particular woman to be my life's companion. Uh, but a marriage in the long and final analysis is not Romeo and Juliet, it's a friendship. And sometimes friends stay together and sometimes friends grow apart. And there's a great deal of misconception about uh, how the honeymoon goes on forever and how even if a marriage is terrible, the man and wife should stay together. I don't believe that. I'm sorry that my marriages ended. They were valid marriages for a while and then uh, they were not valid. And uh, all I can say is I'm grateful to the ladies I married. That each one of them enriched my life enormously in different ways, culturally, emotionally. I remember them with gratitude. I'm glad I knew them. Uh, I may say that my present marriage is my last. It's, <laughs> It's been going on for a long time, and I see no reason for it ever to fall apart. I hope that for you. Um, are any of your children in this business? Yes, I have six children, and uh, my oldest daughter uh, works for her mother, Uta Hagen, uh, the HB studio in New York. My oldest boy, Miguel, is a successful actor and director, also writes comic books, so he has many arrows in his quiver. Just like his father, many and arrows. my youngest uh, boy is a, is a good stage actor, has done some television, and is making a fortune in commercials voiceovers. Oh, oh. So I expect <laughs> so him to keep his father in <laughs> style to which I've become accustomed. Oh, nice to meet you, Jose. Bye.